is Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Purple Daily, presented by Surly Brewing Company. The sweet sounds. The very uh, rich. Yeah, the, the rich, rich sounds. Pat McAfee now. <laughs> it's like a thir- like a thirty. Is it thirty million dollars a year? Good for with him. FanDuel or just yeah. thirty? Yeah. I, mean, I mean, if it's just thirty million over three years, I mean, I mean, we couldn't. You know, could could we here at Score North fit you in FanDuel? I don't know. And Listen, you, I know you they donate could. like five million of it to charity too. I think too. He made like a mm-hmm. humongous donation. Like it's amazing. Yeah, no, they're uh, they're off to the races, man. They are off to the races, just like we are here at Purple Daily Score mm-hmm. North. This is Daily Vikings Entertainment. Phil Mackey, Judd Zilgat, executive producer Declan Goff, and uh, we just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. So if we we should put this disclaimer on it too. If you feel like sometimes we're a little overly critical of certain things, it's because we want you know, it's we're, it's tough love. It's sports dad, you know. So you can't just let your kid run rough shot, okay? Nope. You know. Nope. Yeah, you know, slap him on the back You're of the hand. Not supposed to be a Vikings. That's not <laughs> my job. We're here to, we're to, here to be parent friend. you to a Super Bowl. Is what we're here to do. Mm-hmm. So uh, TCL. Also, if you're watching us uh, on the Purple Daily YouTube channel, please click subscribe and the like button. Help spread the word about the show. If you're watching on a TCL TV, even better because they support us and they uh, they have a new lineup of award-winning TVs delivering the most entertainment with stunning resolution, all at an affordable cost. Enjoy more of the things you love. With TCL. Are you guys ready? Are you ready for a four ready? question Friday here? <laughs> Rick Spielman's ready. Yeah. You like that? You like that? Kirk Cousins is ready. Both those guys are ready. This one actually comes from Jackson Smith in the YouTube comment section. And uh, in case you don't watch our other show or listen to our other show, Mackie and Judd, on a daily basis, we had a very spirited discussion about Pete Carroll yesterday that's been making the rounds I see on social media. Um, Charlie Walters is a longtime columnist, sports columnist, at the Pioneer Press newspaper in the Twin Cities. And he's, he's very plugged in. And he floated Pete Carroll's name as one to watch if the Seahawks move on from Carroll and the Vikings move on from Zimmer. Mm -hmm. Every Thursday on Mackie and Judd, it's Reckless Speculation Thursday. And so we throw out things, hypotheticals, sometimes rooted in reality. And we went down this Pete Carroll path and uh, argued about it. But the question here from Jackson Smith is if you guys, or the comment, if you guys start actively calling for Pete Carroll to be the next head coach, I am done with you. You preach offensive-minded and then switch it up. Pete is cooked, and it would be a step back or a lateral move at best. So, again, the disclaimer here is anything you hear on Reckless Speculation Thursday is not to be taken as ironclad here. These are all just little theoretical discussions. But I want to ask you guys, where officially do you stand with Pete Carroll now that we're removed from Reckless Speculation Thursday, and what... Who is the one like if like if you had to zero in on someone right now if Mike Zimmer gets fired like who is on your short list? For, first of all, I stand on absolutely no. Um, in fact, I agree with with what Jackson said, and I am also done w- with this show if it continues to push for a guy like Pete Carroll. I will not have it. Um, <laughs> I'm a definite no. Um, I I will say this: he is definitely on a list. And it definitely resides either in Egan or somewhere in New Jersey, in a office that is uh, that that houses the Wilfs. Is it a so, handwritten list? So is it typed out? I'm sure it's typed out. Is it on a whiteboard? No, no, no. It wouldn't be on a whiteboard. It would be with owners, my guess. Rich, um, they probably have their secretaries type out lists. So it's got to be typed out. But the point is. Um, the reckless speculation part of this was speculating on Pete Carroll being the coach, but it was not a, it was not reckless speculation that came from, well, let's just pie in the sky, say if Pete Carroll doesn't return to the Seahawks, could he come here? It's literally, so, so this is being talked about. Uh, so be afraid, be very afraid. But I am 1,000% opposed to hiring a 70-year-old 
defensive run first coach who I know is perceived as being a better guy and a better people person, damn it, than Zim is. But that doesn't do it uh, for me personally. So, Jackson, I'm with you completely. I am out on any thought. And I was surprised to hear that the Wills are considering Pete Carroll. And I hate the idea of Pete Carroll coaching this team. And so I don't just like, to reiterate, what's, yeah. what's your short list or what's your? Oh, my short list? Uh, my short list is offensive offensive guys. Um, I'll, I'll go um, with Declan's guy, Kellen Moore. <clears throat> I would go with Byron Leftwich, who I think is going to probably now talk to Jacksonville about going back there, who is currently Tom Brady's OC in Tampa Bay, but I think is a bright young man. Um, Eric Bieniemy, I certainly would talk to. I certainly would. Um, if I have, if I have, if you're forcing me to take a veteran like step in right now, coach, I would ten out of ten times take the Doug Peterson proposition, which I still don't absolutely love, over Pete Carroll. Mm-hmm. I'm not going. With I'm not Peter like guy. completely against the idea of Pete Carroll. Is, is it my preferred option? No, it's not. It's not, but I'm not going to just completely un- not rule out an interview or rule out the idea that he could interview for this job. That's a realistic possibility. I know he's 70 years old and he's old school. He's won a Super Bowl. I wouldn't be shocked at all if he becomes available that the Wolves would say, hey, come on in. Let's have a talk about this head coaching candidacy. I'm not completely against it. He's not my preferred option. I like the guys like Kellen Moore. I like Byron Leftwich. I like Doug Peterson. I would say those are probably one, two, three on my short list if I was running the Vikings and if I was a dissemble of uh, of the Will family. That's where I would go, and those are my three guys I would bring to the table to be the next head coach of the Vikings. But I'm not just completely against the idea that Pete Carroll even couldn't interview for this job or possibly be the next head coach of the Vikings. It wouldn't shock me. Yeah, I uh, he's Pete Carroll's not on my short list. For the, you know, just going back to yesterday's conversation, it was specifically like put yourself in the shoes of the Wilfs and what like what would they think? And I'm and I'm and I'll I'll keep banging this drum. Next year, I think Aaron Rodgers plays in the AFC next year. I think he plays for either the Broncos or the Steelers. And if that happens, you have a win now window that's even more open next year because the division is like it's three rebuilding teams but maybe not re- the Packers aren't rebuilding they have a good roster but like the Vikings are the best team in the division if Aaron Rodgers is gone and so I don't think you want to take a ton of chances like building this whole thing from scratch and from that standpoint I could see the logic of all right Pete Carroll bring me you know, he's got some flaws he's 70 he's very defensive minded but I could see it but he's not on my short list in fact I did write out I don't have a secretary but I did write out a short list here for you guys uh this is this is my list of four screen, coaches, yeah. it's uh, it's yeah, Doug you Doug Peterson, Byron Leftwich, Kellen Moore, and Eric B. And I didn't spell out the last names here. I just did the last initials in case someone finds my list. I don't want did them to write, know exactly write what the that list, list is. like in third grade because your your penmanship What's looks wrong? like what, what, you were what, what sent you? home to, to do a homework assignment what? by your teacher. Mrs. Great. My penmanship Magoo is amazing, dude. Uh, that, Especially the N on Kellen here. Look at you know, that. Yeah, what part of that penmanship? No, but I mean, you know, it's big. It's like it's the old big block letters. What's oh wrong my with God. my penmanship? I'm just asking. I'm just asking. I mean, may, maybe next time you want to type it up. And I, it, you like how I'm yeah. secretive here too. I didn't want. You know, if someone no. finds this, I don't want the last names name, to be on here. And it doesn't say Phil Mack in fourth yeah. grade. It just says nothing. Yeah. So they can't tell. Exactly. I think I we know, have the same list. My list is about relating to a quarterback and getting the most out of a passing game, whether it's Kirk Cousins or somebody else. And Doug Peterson has the best track record of all these guys. Like, you know, it ended in flames in Philadelphia. But for God's sakes, that guy was regarded as one of the great offensive masterminds and leaders in the NFL like four years ago. Nick Foles was a Super Bowl MVP. They beat the Patriots. And Doug Peterson was being, you know, propped up as one of the three or four best coaches in the NFL. And then things, you know, hit the skids. Yep. Um, So if you're looking for someone who's done it offensively with less than elite quarterback play, Doug Peterson has that cred. You know, Byron Leftwich, we've heard so many great things. Alex Boone has has told us behind the scenes stories about him uh, because he played for Byron for, for a minute. Eric Bieniemy is really interesting. Makes me a little nervous if Kirk Cousins is still the quarterback. I don't know that their personalities would mesh. I mean, Bieniemy is a fiery, crusty guy. He will get okay. into you. 
You have to be okay being coached very hard. Mm-hmm. Eric Bieniemy is uh, is no joke. So I think he's going to get a shot. I don't know if Kirk and Eric are the best pairing. Am I really worried about Kirk that much, though? What, like, is Kirk going to be here lo- long term? I, I would far prefer to find he, the right he coach. Be, dude. And he might if be. If Kirk melts down, just, just be like, okay. What's the, Okay, what is the percent chance? Uh-huh. Let's say they make a coaching change. And then it's up to whoever the GM is and the coach to figure out, all right, what do we do with this Kirk contract? One more year left. Right. What's the percentage chance they sign Kirk to an extension in even further in his mid thirties? Because I think it's fairly high. I think it's probably above fifty percent. Yeah, I, I, sixty. Totally de- I think I think sixty is my first guess. I say I say it's fifty because I have no idea. Like a GM and coach, they very well might com- come in and have a preconceived philosophy. So, yeah, I, I mean, that's the problem. I don't like, <clears throat> I feel like Pete Carroll, that name and, and potential hire is trying to like sidestep problems. It's like, well, if Pete comes in, he's going to love Dalvin like Mike did. And he's probably going to get, get along with Kirk. Okay. But he's still going to be a defensive guy. And, and perhaps he, he can bring the same magic that he brought with Wilson, which he did quite a while ago. And they're certainly not the same person. I, I want somebody who's going to get, in here as a GM and coach and I want them day one here to go to the cafeteria and eat very difficult discussions for breakfast. That's what I want them to do. <laughs> I want them to eat difficult discussions. I, like I don't it. want them to avoid them. Like Dean, yeah, Dean Evans and Kevin Fiala you like that? very heart to heart difficult conversation. I, right now. I continue to say this. The parallels between where the wild uh, where the wild resided a couple of years back and now are exactly what I think Vikings fans should be hoping to have the conversations about. The Vikings 2021 to 23 or so. Mm -hmm. If the Vikings can find what the Wild had, which is independent parties to come in and say, this is bleeped, let's fix it. I think ultimately fans will miss some players, but be incredibly happy with where things land. Yeah. All right, question number two here. Speaking of Mike Zimmer, so we now have movies coming out about the life of Kurt Warner and apparently of Sean Payton. Unbelievable. Was there a market for, like, were we clamoring for, I mean, Kurt Warner's a great story, but. (laughs) Kurt Warner wouldn't make some sense. The football action in that is awful. I I saw a promo commercial for it. Oh, I can't wait. We have to review it. It's Unbelievably bad. Do they show arena league footage or do they just show well, like Rams? They're showing footage. the Rams games, but they're so like implausible and poorly shot, in my opinion. It's and then like, you can and you pick this up just from the previews. From the preview, yep. Yeah, oh, a commercial, man. Phil. A commercial. Oh. And the Peyton film is what Peyton did during the year that, that he was suspended for Bounty Gate. What? There's yeah, a movie, that's there's a yes. So there's a movie about so how Sean Peyton spent the year after he cheated. Yes, and his team. And you find cheated out he was the Vikings out of a Super Bowl. A terrible basically. dad who ignored his kids, and so, and okay, now welcome to NFL coaching, and now or shows life. up. Well, exactly. And Kevin James. So the best part is the the tweet of the picture of Kevin James with the promo for Kevin the James. film said Kevin James like you'll never recognize Kevin James as Sean Payton. You know, it's, it's a picture that looks like exactly like Doug. From from King of Queens, there's no discernible it's very, difference. It's very clearly Kevin. It's James. Kevin James. Has Kevin Great James show. ever not just played Kevin James in everything he's been? No, in? he but just I mean, plays Kevin James. They try in to make Hitch. it sound like he's he Kevin lost James. Like Fifty pounds, you know. Look at him. Look like Sean Payton. He looks nothing like Sean Payton. And Dennis Leary is still alive. How do you not cast him as Sean Payton? All right, so so here's the question. And Declan threw this up on the Score North Facebook page a couple days ago, and, the, and we'll read some of the responses. If Kevin James can play Sean Payton, which actor should play Mike Zimmer in either a movie or a Netflix special? And uh, I don't know who some of these actors are, but I'll just read some of these. So uh, uh, Andy Serkis, who played uh, Gollum in Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Tommy Lee Jones is being mentioned a couple times. Tommy Lee Jones might act. That might be. That might 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 work. (laughs) Uh, the guy who plays Pee Wee Herman, that guy, because of the voice, I what, suppose. Paul Rubin. <laughs> hey, John, <Bay. laughs> Uh Roger says Meryl Streep. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, boy. Her. Oh, boy. Here we go. Um, let me just scroll through here. Let's see. Um, 
Robert Wool himself. How about uh, Jim Carrey as his Lloyd Robert. Christmas character from Dumb and Dumber? Robert Denzel Wall. Washington. I've just have Denzel Washington play Mike Zimmer. <laughs> Sean Penn. Yep. Okay. That could actually Dennis, work. Dennis, Dennis Quaid. Quaid. Uh, yeah, Dennis Quaid. Yeah, he's a sports movie guy. I don't know. Do you guys have any? Robert Duvall. There's another one. He's been around for a long time. That might not be bad. I, see I think I think Tommy Lee Jones, man. I agree. Uh, Tommy Jones again. I, I think agree. Tommy Lee Jones is the leading candidate. It has to be. Robert yeah. Duvall. Okay, here's a secondary, just sort of a like a 2B question about Mike Zimmer. I heard a local radio host and personality refer to Mike Zimmer as a bastion of excellence last week. Bastion of excellence as a defense for, like, why would you ever consider moving on from a bastion of excellence like Mike Zimmer? What is a short phrase that you guys would use to describe Mike Zimmer? Crusty. Sour. Try to think of a phrase, though. Or a better, yeah, a better way to put it would be, like, how would you sum up his tenure as Vikings coach, eight years? Because that's how I interpret, like, his eight years have been a bastion of excellence, right? How would oh, you guys... Oh, sum up. Okay, that's very different. Um, mm. I would sum, out, sum it up as not quite there. Not quite there. You didn't because you really didn't come close to a championship, um, but you weren't a failure. Like it, it's been a very decent run, mm -hmm. so not quite there. Okay. That's how I would sum up his tenure. Good, not great. I think good, not great. I think he accomplished a lot of good things. Uh, he turned around a defense that had been for years, or for not years, but for a good amount of time, being absolutely gashed. For the first time in my lifetime, as fans who are probably now in their late 20s, entering their 30s, the Vikings never had a period of time where you knew that the defense was going to shut down the offense. They always had good defensive lines. The Williams, Wall, Jared Allen, etc. They always were opportunistic even. There was some, you know, mm -hmm. Brian, you know, uh, uh, Corey Chavis and Brian Russell were getting interceptions. There was periods of time where they were a little optimistic, but they were... A stout defense. There was times in 2017 and even into 18 where when the opposing offense was on the field, you actually had a belief they're going to shut them down. They're going to force a punt. Mm -hmm. That never existed in my previous Vikings tenure, but it was good. It was never great. I think that's the best way to sum it up. Yeah, I mean, uh, so Bastion of Excellence, he's a, he's a conductor of pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty what about bad. Bastion pretty good. of Excellence. Pastor, I wouldn't you know, go that I, far. I, I would reserve. I would reserve that title for like Bill Belichick. Like Bill Belichick, yeah. Sean Payton at times has been a bastion of excellence. Mike Zimmer has had one really, really good right. like put your name on it right. year, 2017. Right. And uh, and 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 he's avoided train wrecks. I think he's a bastion of avoiding train wrecks too. Like they don't. They're well, so Kurt. They're they're competitive. Kurt. A bastion of competitiveness. That's another way to put a ball, it. A ball of fire. He's a ball of fire, too. He's a contagious <laughs> ball of fire. I, I, I think that the most important thing, if you're going to call him things like a bastion of excellence, which I think, you know, that's reserved for a Hall of Fame coach, probably is to the most important thing is that you can't have a horse in that race, though. So, like, if, if you're going to use a phrase like that, it's very important that you are unbiased, right? That you take a step back, and most importantly, you don't have a horse in that race. I see, you, I see what you're there. Um, you know, you know. I don't know what you're talking about. I just, I'm just being honest here. I would say Livia has been a bastion of excellence for you. No question about it. No question about it. And th there is no conflict here because I have not been misled. My friends at Livia Weight Control Centers have me down from 240, where my face look like I look like Santa Claus. I mean, I'm still old, but. From 240 to 210, and and what we're calling this is a season to believe, and I'm telling you right now, you have a reason to believe that you can lose the weight that I've lost, and as we get into 2022, feel great about yourself. Now, here's the key. You can save 50% off the program. Yes, 50% off the program. Your first visit is free. This offer is going to go away soon, though. So if you want to get involved now, 50% off the program, call 855-GO-L-I-V-E-A or go to Livia.com, L-I-V-E-A.com. 
Sign up now. Big savings, big weight loss. New you, see what I did there? 2022 is going to be different thanks to my friends at Libya. Also, hey, we're giving away a Justin Jefferson jersey via the Score North app all week long. Today is your last day to register to win. Open the Score North app, go to Listener Rewards in the little menu, and you just have to enter the code word LSU. LSU. That's where he played college football. I'm not sure if you guys knew that. Justin Jefferson, a big star player at LSU. LSU is the code word today on the Score North app for a Justin Jefferson jersey. <laughs> That's the guy who drafted him right there, cackling. All right, question number three here for Question Friday from Jason Barnett via the Score North app. I got a question for you guys I think you would have some fun with. Recently, Pro Football Talk did an article about the NFL possibly expanding up to 40 teams someday. It's 32 right now. If that were to happen, what are some of the other cities and states that you would like to see get a team of their own? And as a follow-up, how would you realign the divisions? If that's that follow-up is might have to tackle that some other day. That's like, a lot of different time. Yeah. That's what are some of the though. other cities and, and or states that you would like to see? If this was a thing, right? how about countries, gentlemen? How about countries? Let's 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 think globally. London global doesn't league. London doesn't work. Like if you were to put yes. a full division in London, maybe. But like, you can't travel seven hour time zone differences. There's and like families and stuff. Like yeah, I, hell no. the you logistics guys are discounting. Of that. You guys are discounting the technology that's going to bring us more concord like speed of air travel. We're gonna get there in no time. Well, if that, okay, if that happens, yeah, if we're just going to warp like Mario, okay. But but right now, I'm going Toronto. Toronto's a great place. Now, bu- now that is going to slightly infringe on Buffalo, so that's an issue. But but Canada, the exploration into Canada needs to happen, and Toronto's perfect. Big market, savvy sports fans, it's absolutely perfect. Um, Long term, Mexico City. That's a destination where it, it w- wouldn't be impossible to travel to and again it loops in a fan base that i think would be incredibly passionate uh beyond that like in the states here like like what are we trying to talk san antonio which would be a problem for the texans and cowboys what about, probably like, what about like some of these portland but that'd be a problem for seattle phil wouldn't it yeah i mean <sighs> I'm thinking like SEC country. I mean, there's there's a lot of states down there. So we, I'm just trying to think of NFL team. We got three NFL teams in Florida, but am I missing something? What about like Alabama, Mississippi, like Oklahoma, feel, Oklahoma? That, that'd be a blast, dude. The Oklahoma City, something or another, right? Yeah. And and then the, the and the biggest thing about the NFL is they don't need big markets. Like baseball, you need right. big markets because most sure. of the revenue is is local revenue generating. Yeah. I mean, the NFL has some of the most successful teams are like in Green Bay, Wisconsin, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, you know, Buffalo, yeah. the Buffalo Bills went to four straight Super Bowls. So you don't need big markets. You just need passionate fan bases and then, you know, teams to be competitive within the the structure of the NFL. So I'm going uh, Toronto, Vancouver, too. I, I think if, city. I awesome. think if you hit and 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 look. Vancouver against Seattle. That'd be awesome. They'd hate each other. It'd be fantastic. <laughs> yes. So, I, I everybody think with going, a beard and a flannel shirt up in the Pacific Northwest. Hey man, drinking I think craft going beer into Canada makes hey. sense. I really do. Yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, yeah, I think Toronto, Vancouver, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. I know Charlotte's there, but Raleigh's a, a, a decent market. Portland, Tulsa, and the one area that I'm curious on because these people are annoying as all hell. But I'm curious what would happen if North Dakota got a football team. They love I, their teams. Yeah, something to represent. I would say, I mean, Iowa gets gypped on professional sports. Mm-hmm. You know, Iowa, Omaha, Nebraska. There's there's like a whole section of like Dakotas down to Iowa, Nebraska, Montana, Wyoming. Like they're all kind right. of oh. like there's no teams in there, right? There's no right, but the problem Utah, so the, like the problem in in some of those territories is the fight that you would have about infringement on different teams, because like the Chiefs would would resist, the Vikings might, the Bears might, because the fan bases in Iowa split up very nicely to different teams. So if you tried to move a team 
into uh, Iowa that would siphon away those fan bases, there would be some consternation. Yeah. But that's going to be the case again. If, if you go into Toronto, the Bills are going to complain. Like the Bills are, are going to be upset. So in a lot of these discussions, you do have market territory infringement problems that are why teams often don't get or why states don't get awarded teams because they're already considered to be a fan base of X, Z, Y, Z, uh, y team. Yeah. All right. Question number four here. You like that? You like that? It's our would you rather question of the week, the random would you rather question, and it's presented by Surly. Would you rather drink a Surly oh, or a close. Surly? Oh, boy. Hold on a second here. I'm going to get a buzzer out, and I'm going to get say, mm, I'd would rather you, drink a... Would you rather drink a Surly out of a can or pour it into a pint glass? You know what? I got to admit, pint glass. Yeah. A nice pint glass, too. Like oh, a yeah. real beer pint glass. None of this, like, I'm going to go get my water uh, glass. No, no, no. We need a real... You, here's the thing. W- when you drink a Surly, and especially, ladies and gentlemen, a Furious IPA, do it do it with respect. Put some respect on, on the name of that can when you make that nice, sideways, perfect pour into that glass. And in fact, you'll be doing that, I would hope, Saturday, Sunday, into Monday night, right? Vikings, Bears. So you'll have the Surly right by you, and you will pour each one with the love that you should show. Such a classic, like such that. a great beer. You Surly like Furious is the way to go. All right, here is the would you rather question of the week. Would you rather be stuck on a broken ski lift up in the air or in a broken elevator? This isn't tough for me at, at all because this comes down to two things. Do you do you not like heights or are you claustrophobic? I don't like heights. So like, and, and I know that, that to a person who likes heights a, a, a lift is not that that high but if i'm stuck there and it's swaying a little bit back and forth i freak out i can be claustrophobic but it's not as bad so i am taking i am taking being stuck in the elevator oh, above man. being stuck on the ski lift but this is totally personal preference so that's just what i, I would prefer they both i think suck. also the the question here is like well how how high are we suspended like is the elevator like 15 floors up and the and the ski lift is you know x amount of 100 feet down like they're wh- both what high are we looking enough, at they're both suspended high Mario. enough to where if they fell bodily Impending harm death. would be inflicted yeah. okay okay yeah. all right I, i'm i'm a snowboard i love snowboarding i have never i i've taken some l's getting on and off the chairlift in my youth when i learned how to snowboard but i've never felt scared surprisingly on a chairlift i really haven't uh, I have more fears getting off it than I do falling to my death. I think I would rather be stuck in the elevator. Wow. I think oh, I'd wow. rather be stuck in Why? the elevator. I feel fine on the chairlift. I feel fine on the chairlift. Okay, but then wouldn't you rather be stuck in the, stuck chairlift? On the chairlift? I, but like, I, I, it doesn't scare me. Like, I, I, the elevator, the elevator, I'm trying to like talk myself in now the other one, I guess. I don't know which one I really want <laughs> because both of them might be which, suspended. Which I don't like you claustrophobia. Which one scares you? Yeah, then stay out of the elevator. Take the ski that, yeah, then I would then I would take the ski lift. Yeah, I'm okay. overthinking the question. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine myself wow. stuck in You're both situations nervous at just the same time. About it, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm imagining myself being stuck both times. So, yes, I'd rather be stuck on the chairlift cuz I I'm fine there. That's my okay. long-winded way. And of I will that. sit next to Declan on that chairlift. Yeah. I, I don't like it gets hot. You're potentially sharing air with people. <laughs> you know, it's just yeah, I don't want to suffocate. There's just a lot in that. Well, you're not going to suffocate, but it is sweat. Cla- claustrophobic. It's going to be most claustrophobic. Terrible. Yeah. And I'd rather just uh, you know just get some fresh air, just be hanging out outside. And yeah, my, but you're my feet stuck up dangling. in the but you're stuck up in the air, dangling, and the wind blows you on a little bit. I don't that's like actually that. Sounds kind of great. Just that get some fresh nice. air, get a nice little view of the horizon. Some, oh, ugh, yuck! You know, some trees. The, you know, that's nature too. I don't want to be stuck are. in nature. <laughs> One of the best curb your enthusiasm moments of all time on a chairlift. Just go. Just go Google it if you haven't seen it. When Larry's stuck on a chair. Oh, it's great. On, I've seen on it. a holy day. I have, I have not I've seen, seen it. Okay. I've not seen this. Oh, God. Look I've seen it. Oh, One yeah, of the best ones of all time. Yes. What season? Our earliest, I think. I think it's earliest. Okay. Like year. Check that out. Three. Yeah. I've seen it. It's great. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's right. All right. That's four question Friday here on Purple Daily. Daily Vikings Entertainment Therapy. Don't forget Vikings Bears. 
Monday Night Football, and you can find the most fan-friendly, interactive show in Minnesota sports, Vikings Ventline, right here on the Purple Daily YouTube channel after that game is over. We'll see you guys tomorrow.